Hi everyone, this is Gabby Chung with Art and Business Education for Photographers. Today I'm going to teach you a few different techniques that you can use to add warm fall tones to your images. Now keep in mind, there are a lot, a lot of different ways that you can achieve a similar or the same result. We are going to go over six different methods. We're going to use five um, different adjustment layers. We're going to look at selective color, hue saturation, uh, the channel mixer, gradients, and gradient maps. So I really want you to see how each of these affects the image, and then you can decide which one or which ones uh, you prefer to use on your style of imagery. So let's get started. I'm going to switch this back to Photoshop. and. You can see here, um, this was the edit, obviously, and um, this is the original image. So I edited this image, and this is just my typical, clean, normal edit. Uh, so this is what you would be starting with when you um, do your own image. Just edit it the way you typically would, and that's where we would begin. So um, let me head over to this image. And so that's our original, original, original. And then this is our edit, just a clean edit. And I'm gonna start with the most simple ones first, and then we're gonna go on to the other ones. They're not really complicated, they just require more steps. Um, so first, we are gonna look at selective color. And I always like starting with the yellow. So with the yellow, um, and if you don't know where selective color is, it's this little box right here. Um, or you can go into your layer adjustment dropdown and click on selective color right here, whatever you prefer. So all of what we're talking about today, they're all adjustment layers. Um, so first, um, you have your selective color properties window open and you want to adjust the yellows. So the yellows, um, it seems like there's a lot of green, but green, um, it is changed through the yellow. So the cyan, you wanna lower the cyan, and then you wanna increase the magenta, and that's just gonna give it that nice warm feel that you can see it's taking on. And then I want you to go into the greens. I always start with the yellows first because it's more apparent what um, the effect is, you know, what effect is happening. So then I move on to the greens. And sometimes I just do the yellows only, it just depends on the image. So the greens, um, again, lower the cyan. So you can see it makes it just a little bit more orange. And then I want to increase the yellows because it gives it a slight pop of yellow instead of being really um, kind of bland and not so fun. So this would be uh, use of selective color. You can see, let's look at the original. So you can see how green that was and how much of a difference that does. Keep in mind always when you're applying an adjustment layer to your whole image, how that adjustment is affecting the skin tones and the tones of the clothing. So you can see here, especially in her legs, you can see that it's really red, and in her face, it's a little bit magenta. Um, another, a little disclaimer, um, the recording software that I use does mute the colors, so you can't see the colors the way I see them, so I'm gonna try to explain that um, as we go along. So because the skin tone is a little bit too warm and too magenta, I would, um, get a soft brush and click on this mask over here at your layer. Click on the mask, um, select your brush, and just make a nice soft brush and brush it off of their skin probably at a 70% opacity. So you just don't want the skin tone to be magenta. So I would just very quickly and lightly brush over it um, and I'm not being very precise because, you know, these are just examples. These aren't the final edits that the clients will get. Um, so you can see 
that's our original um, edit and then this is our kind of fall warm edit so I like it here um, maybe we will so this is full opacity maybe we'll bring it down to like 70 I always like to bring down the opacity um, so that we're not going overboard it's easy really easy to go overboard um, so I'm gonna make uh, duplicates of these layers and then I'm going to merge them so that we can reference them later. Then I'm going to turn them off so that we have our original again. So now we're going to look at the hue saturation layers. Um, for this one we want to go into the yellows, kind of really similar to selective color. We want to go into the yellows and mess with that. So the hue I usually take it left and you can see that it makes the yellows orange and then in our green so we'll go to our greens in our greens I usually let's see again I'll go to the left and just see where that looks good probably around here and then I will increase the saturation of the yellows just to give it a little bit of pop we don't want you know just a bland looking image so the saturation of the yellows helps a little bit but again don't go overboard and then we are done with that so you can see again that the skin tone did take on a bit of magenta so I'm gonna brush that off again at we're gonna do an 80% opacity see what that does and again, I'm being very rough with my edits because we don't have to be super precise here. Um, oops. So let's do that. And then the floor does look a little bit too red. So I'm going to mask it off of the floor at 20% just to bring back some of you know the normal color of the floor. And then we will also um, lower the opacity so that the effect isn't overboard. Um, probably right around there. So you can see our original and our hue saturation adjustment layer. So again, I am going to make a duplicate of these two, merge them, and turn off the layer. And then now we're going to talk about the channel mixer so the channel mixer i believe is this one yeah the channel mixer you're just going to mess with the reds so the and keep in mind that the channel mixer when you make small adjustments it makes a huge huge impact so that's kind of one of the reasons why i don't like the channel mixer because it's easy to go overboard really really fast um, so the reds, you're just going to increase the reds ever so slightly, and you can really see on that skin tone, it's a glowing magenta. Um, but we're just looking at the trees right now. You can see that, and then the greens, I might do a little bit in the greens. It makes it very, very orange. So that's it for Channel Mixer. Get rid of it. Um, you can see how atrocious the skin tones look, the floor, um, it's just too much. It's like we put a neon pink orange filter over it. So I'm actually going to just take down the opacity so it's right around there. And this one you really have to mask it off. Again, I don't really use the channel mixer, but I wanted you to see, you know, its capabilities. Um, and I don't use it for this reason because it really, it's easy to do too much and then you have to do a lot of masking a lot of really precise masking and you know that takes a while so let us pretend that this is being done with some precision um and they actually they even look green now so i'm going to bring back just a little bit of that warmth just so that they kind of match the scene and then I'm going to lower the opacity even more. So I just think it's too much. But you can see um, that it, you know, it, it affects the entire image, which is nice. It gives you those nice, rich, 
warm tones. So let me make a duplicate of these two layers and merge them and then turn it off and we will move on to the next one. So the next one is the gradient tool. So we'll go in here, select gradient, and then it, by default, it selected the color I had as the foreground. We are gonna angle this down so that it is coming from the top and going down across your image. And then we're gonna click here and open the gradient editor. Oh, you guys couldn't see this, hold on. So this is what comes up when you um, make a gradient layer. And um, what I was saying is you leave it at linear and you angle it down um, so that it's coming from the top. So if you angled it up, it would come from the bottom, um, but you just wanna angle it to the top or to the bottom so that it's coming from top down. And then you wanna open your gradient editor and you wanna change this one to a nice orange color, kinda of like the sunsetty light that we all like, right? And probably around there. And we will say okay, okay, okay. And we're gonna select that layer. If it's not selected, it should be. And change the layer style to overlay. So overlay is going to give us that warm um, orangey tone and we will probably lower the opacity so it's not crazy. And of course, oops, I lowered it too much. Of course, our parent skin tone because they're the closest to the top is orange um, and we want to mask that off. So maybe at 80% we will mask that off of them and their clothing because these clothes should still stay true to color even if we do warm up that image. So let me just mask this off fairly quickly. Mask it off the little girl skin. So I really like the gradient um, tool because you can see how it, it affects the whole image in a very subtle way. So um, the bulk of it is at the top where we want it in the trees and then it kind of just trickles down um, and it's really pretty. And of course, lower your opacity if it seems like too much for you. Um, you can turn these on and off and see, see? It kind of just brightens the whole image and it's really pretty. So let's, uh, make a duplicate of this and merge it and put it up here so we can look at it later and then turn that off so we are back to our original edit right so we'll click on our original and then we're gonna do another one so we're gonna do a gradient map and the gradient map oops I did a gradient just kidding the gradient map is this so so you want to click on your editor and on the left side you want to select um i usually do an orange so again kind of like the you know sunsetty light is what we want an orange and then on this side we're just going to do a medium gray and I want you to play with these with your images, you know, go lighter, it makes it a little bit brighter, go darker, it makes it a little bit more moody. Um, just play with these options and really get a feel for what these tools can do. So then we say OK and get rid of that. And then for the layer style, we're going to do overlay. So this is very orange. Um, so let's lower it. Let's find a happy middle. So probably around here is nice. And again, we would mask it just a bit off of the parents and the children. Um, so let me, let's see. Let's mask it off of their clothing. We want his jacket to stay blue, his pants to stay brown and not orange. Hands and 
that looks good there. So this would be um, the gradient in an orange. We can even lower the opacity. Let's see. You can see how it brightens it just a bit. Um, so you can duplicate and merge and then we will get rid of that one. Put this one up here, get rid of that layer. And again, back to square one. So the last thing I wanna show you is um, another thing you can do with a gradient. So click on gradient for a new um, fill layer. And then we are going to change the style to radial and we are going to reverse it. And we're gonna click on the gradient editor and what you want is to select, so we were on something like this where it faded to, to nothing, to no color. What we want is color. So click on any of the ones that have two colors and you want to change this side, or actually leave that side as black, make another color right around here and it's gonna be a nice burnt orange if it ever lets me click it. So a nice dark orange right around there. And then we're gonna add another one closer to this edge. And this one is gonna be a, like a pretty orange, something like this. And then this final one is gonna be yellow. So a nice orangey yellow, not a green yellow. And you don't have to do this every time. So once you have done it once, click on new and then it'll save it um, to your presets. So you don't have to do it every single time. Then you'll say, okay, you will, um, so while the gradient fill, while this little properties window is open, you can move this around and scale is what makes it bigger and softer. So you can see you can see how soft that becomes. And I'm moving it up to the corner, you'll see. So this is gonna make a very subtle sun flare. And you can play with it, um, play with you know different colors and different, um, like the hardness and the softness and the, the size to get you know different effects that you might like for your images. So then for the image or the layer style rather, you would click it and change it to screen. So screen is gonna give us that nice bright sun flare and we just wanna lower the opacity. So I'll probably make it even bigger or lower, probably around there. And you can see if we lowered it all the way, we can find the center is right there. but probably around here. I want it to go very gradually over the image and then I'm going to mask it off a little bit off of the their faces and their skin. So click on that layer mask, get your brush, um, put it on black and then we'll probably do, let's try 60% and see what that does. You can see how much not on the little boy that much. It's on dad's jacket quite a bit. And then on the little girl. So I'm going to lower this even more. So you can see kind of the effect that that's doing. So this is our before, this is our after. And again, you can change the size, you can change how soft it is and you can change the position. So make sure, always make sure that wherever your fake sun flare is coming from is actually where the light was coming from. You never want to put it on the opposite side because obviously that makes no sense. Um, so this would be an example of the sun flare. And I'm going to make a copy of this and take it up to our other examples. So I just want to go over these again. Um, and so you can see how they affected the image and you can you know, play with images on your own after seeing this. So 
this one is the sun flare. Um, this one, see how different it is. This one is our gradient map, and that was in that orange tone. And this one, let's see, was our gradient with the orange coming down from the top and fading down. This is our channel mixer. This is our hue saturation, which seems to have the least effect. Um, this is our selective color. And this is our original. So you can see, um, you can also stack them on each other. So let's say you used the gradient map and you put that sun flare on there, obviously at a lower opacity because that just looks a little bit overdone. So maybe around there. And that is a really pretty, you know, warm fall edit. Uh, it has really rich tones, which is, you know, what I always aim for. I never want things to be washed out. Um, that's often what sun flares will do is wash things out because it's hazy. Um, so just be mindful of that. And, you know, it obviously it's to your preference. Um, but yeah, you can see, let's see, this is probably the one I would like best. So I'm going to make a copy of that. And then you can see between that and the original, it's a big difference. And that is it. So I hope you've learned something. Um, for more, you can head over to the website, uh, www.gcpedu.com. And that is the Art and Business Education for Photographers website. And if you guys have any questions, if you want to link me to some of the um, images that you've made using these techniques, I would love to hear from you. You can leave a comment in um, the comment box below. And that is it. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.